for everyone. I hope you guys are having a blessed day today. Um, just want to come give you the gospel and share something with you guys. Uh, the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And that's that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead for our justification. Jesus always existed. He is the second person of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus <laughs> left heaven, was born of a virgin, lived the perfect life, never sinned, and shared his precious blood on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins, past, present, and future, and also to reconcile us back to God and to obtain and give us eternal life for us. Not for him, but for us. Okay, he purchased us. Okay, uh, what we must do is we must believe the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, which is his death, burial, resurrection, and that his shed blood was sufficient to pay for all our sin debts, past, present, and future. And once you believe this, you receive eternal life and forgiveness of sins, all of them, okay, by God's own promise himself. Now, um, people say, well, why do I need forgiveness of sin? Because everyone is guilty before God. God makes it clear that none is righteous, none is good, none seeks after him, none. Even your righteousness, he says, filthy rags before him because God's standard of perfection is so high, even in your best day, you won't even scratch the surface. So he is just saving you all the drama, all the melodramatic you know, meltdowns that you're going to be having trying to achieve that and just purchase it for you. And all he did is offering it for you for free. So all you have to do is receive it. Ephesians 2, 9 tells us, For by grace are you saved through faith and are not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. There's no boasting when you're receiving this gift. Everyone received the exact same gift. Now, believe this gospel <laughs> and receive the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and be reconciled back to God, okay? Now, I'm going to share something with you guys that's pretty... It's something that was just in my mind while I was walking my dog this morning. And I, and I just kept playing this over this conversation in my head, okay? So you hear people talk about the grace of God being easy believism, the eternal security. Oh, that's easy believism. That's not true, blah, 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 whatever. All the anti-eternal security people are, okay, even though that's what the Bible teaches. I'm here to tell you something. We're going to use logic again. <laughs> if you know, you know. Let's use logic, okay? If eternal security was easy believism, if it was easy believism, then why aren't many people believing it? If it was that easy, if it was such an easy believism, why aren't the majority of churches, you know, teaching eternal security? Why aren't the uh, majority of people teaching faith alone? Why aren't the majority of people believing that what Christ has done was good enough? Why is that if it was easy believism? Obviously, it's not easy believism. What's easy believism is faith plus anything. Because that seems to be the one that many people seem to believe. So that's easier for them to believe that. Why is that? Because they are on the broad and wide road. That's what easy believism is. Broad and wide road. Okay? Guys, you know, I'm not just trying to make stuff up. This is just consensus. We know that. Majority of the people believe in other Doctrine outside from eternal security. They do not believe in eternal security. Only a small amount of people do. And that is the narrow path. This is why Jesus said only a few find that narrow path. Only a few find it. Why? Because the wide road is easy. It's easy to just get on in. Everyone is doing it. So yeah, why not? You know, you know they've been teaching this in churches for years. Why not? You know? Your pastor taught it. The pastor before him taught it. The pastor before him before him taught it, you know, so it's like generation of lies just perpetrating anti eternal security doctrine, placing people under the position of trying to gain favor with God in order to please God. But the Bible told you it is impossible to please God without faith. It's only faith. You see, if you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are pleasing to God. That's simple. And it is not easy believism because that is the most hard, as easy of a message it is, the simplistic message of the gospel is the hardest one for people to accept. I mean, there is nothing easy believism about it because majority of people do not believe it. So it's not easy believism. They actually deny that. You can't call it easy believism if the majority does not believe it. 
the majority believe are the message outside of the gospel, so it's not easy believe in. <laughs> and it is not a cheap grace. While it is free for us, it wasn't free for God. Jesus had to die for that, okay? He had to die for that. It wasn't a, a make-believe pretend death. He physically had to die. They were not pretending to whip him with stir foams. It was physical whip that was ripping his skin apart. They did not have thick hair in their hands and pretend to pull the, the beard off his face. No, they physically yanked the beard off his face. They physically punched him. They, there was no prop, you know, like the movies where, you know, the stuntman comes and, and step in, take the punch, you know, quick, fake punch, and then Jesus shows up and be like, ah, ah, no, none of that. He took all of that beatings for you to the point where he was unrecognizable, okay? He was unrecognizable, according to the book of Isaiah. So everything he went through, there is nothing cheap about it. That is actually blasphemous words and, and insult to hurl at the same Christ that you claim that you love. You claim that you believe in. All because of your offense and his word that you choose not to believe because you want to make up your own word and run around with it. But I'm here to tell you, hell is heating up even, even hotter. It's, it's getting more, much hotter. And if you on your way there, it's because of you choose to be on your way there. Because God has offered you a way out. You keep rejecting it because Jesus, what he did wasn't good enough for you. So therefore, you feel you have something to contribute to help him out. Even though you didn't lift a single cross, you didn't suffer the same way he suffered. You were not nailed on a cross. None of that. You were living and enjoying your life, you know, right now. You got your home, you know, while he was here on earth, you know. While he was doing his ministry, he, had, he did not have his own home. You know, he didn't have his own home here. He was constantly on the move. Okay, so please don't insult the grace of God by calling it easy believism. Because first of all, that is even not what it is. Easy believism is works, faith plus anything. That is easy believism because that's what majority of you guys believe. So easy believism goes to you guys, and don't call the grace of God cheap. How dare you? How dare you? It's just like you going and purchase your home. You are so excited. And someone, you know, the people that are so excited, you, you come and then they look at your house like, that's a cheap house. I'm sure you wouldn't be smiling and be like, oh, thank you so much. It was a cheap house anyway. No, you, you get angry right away. Be like, what? Do you know how much I have to pay for this house? You're going to tell me it, that, that's a cheap house. Because that's pretty much what you're doing is spitting in the face of Christ that you claim to love by calling his sacrifice cheap. Repent from that mindset, people. Really. Anyway, I just want to encourage you guys to just keep standing on the truth, you know. Is it believism? Is of works? Is of faith plus anything? That's what is it believism means because that's where the majority lies. 70% of a poll that was taken from over 3,000 people aging between 18 and 55, okay, and from different denominations. Let me tell you something. 70% said, of those people said, that Jesus is not the only way to make it to heaven. And these are churches, people in churches, by the way, okay? So these buildings have failed so many people. And people going there by the droves, Sitting in a church does not make you a Christian, just like sitting in a, uh, in a garage doesn't make you a car. You see what I'm saying? It, <laughs> it's not the same thing. It is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has accomplished. That is what, that is what makes you a Christian, believing in what Christ has done and that he completed all things for you. Okay, when he said it is finished, it really was finished. There's not your parts to do. And you don't add anything to faith. Nothing. Okay? We are justified by faith apart from works. Hear that? Not, oh my gosh, guys. Please, stop listening to people who are leading you astray. They're, unfortunately, if they, if they haven't believed the gospel ever, and they're pretty much believing the nonsense that they're teaching, they're already on their way to hell anyway, and they want you to go there too. Please don't listen to them. 
Jesus Christ paid it all and he offered it freely to all who will receive it. Salvation is available to you today. Do not put it off. Today is the day of salvation. I hope you guys get blessed today. Sorry if you hear that noise going on in the background. I have my Roomba going downstairs. <laughs> my dog, you know, shed. So I need that to, you know, pick up all this dog hair. Anyway, you guys have a blessed day, okay? I am a little bit tired today because I had a lot of stuff I had to do this morning. So now I got to figure out what to eat. <laughs> you guys have a blessed day. Peace.